In addition to my command line, I can also use dynamic input interface for entering information while I'm drawing. I'm going to start line command, and this time down on the status bar, I'm going to activate my dynamic input. You'll notice that I have a tooltip that pops up next to the cursor, just like I would see on the command line, specify the first point. And because I have no, no uh, line already started, it's asking me for an input in an X and Y uh, input boxes. Now I could pick a point on the screen by clicking, or I could enter the absolute value that I wanted for start uh, into these boxes. Right now it's prompting me for the X value. I'm going to uh, enter 2 from the keyboard, and to move to the, y, uh, to the Y, I can hit comma, like I would in entering an ordered pair, or I can use the tab key to move to the Y value. And in this case, um, I'll say 2 on the Y. Now you notice that the X value is locked with the little lock symbol next to it. If I wanted to move back and change this, I hit the tab again. It takes me back to the X value, and I could edit that, tab takes me back to the Y value. When I hit enter on the keyboard, this will start my line from that specified location. Now that I've established a start point for my line, I'm operating in dimensional input mode for uh, dynamic input. And it's prompting me for the polar information of the length of my line and the angle. First for the length of my line, I'm going to enter 2 from the keyboard and to move to the angle I'm going to use the tab key to move to the other box. In this case I'm going to put in 45 degrees. To toggle back and forth between these input boxes I can use the tab key and the little lock shows me that the information is locked but I can still change this if I want to. When I hit enter it executes that line segment and now I'm back in entering another polar input uh, distance. I'm going to draw a little square here that's rotated at 45 degrees. So I'm going to enter 2 again, and I'll tab over uh, to the angle. Now the other key that I'm going to use um, when I'm using dynamic input is my down arrow key. And right now, when I hit down arrow, you'll notice that uh, I get an option of undo. If I hit the down arrow key again, the little black dot shows up next to the undo option. And if I hit enter, it will execute that option and undo that last line. To escape out of my options, I hit the escape key and it turns that off. Now, I'm, because I'm drawing a square here, I'm going to uh, draw a line at 100, it looks like about 135 degrees. Notice how as I move around, it's telling me what my current location is in terms of angle. I'll say 135 and hit enter on the keyboard and establish that line. Now one thing that you want to notice about uh, using dynamic input in dimensional input mode is how it measures the angles. I'm, I need uh, another line that's two inches long over here in this direction, so I'm going to say two on the length and tab uh, to my angle. You'll notice that I'm, it's measuring lines up to 180 degrees in a positive direction counterclockwise, but as soon as I pass past 180 degrees, it's now measuring the angle in a positive amount that I would measure clockwise from my zero position. So in dimensional input, I'm never going to enter an angle more than 180 degrees, and it's always going to be a positive value measured either counterclockwise or clockwise from my zero position. So now uh, if I wanted an angle going down here at this, in this direction that would be parallel to that bottom line, this would be a positive 135 degrees as measured clockwise from my zero point. So I'll enter 135. If I want to come down here and close, I can change my input method uh, from dimensional mode to pointer mode. To change the pointer mode, I'm going to use my relative at key from the keyboard. So I'm going to use shift and hit at, and you notice how uh, the input box is changed in dynamic input. This looks more traditional with my distance and my angle of. I'm going to enter 2 from the keyboard and tab 
to my angle of. Now using the pointer method, if you notice that angle now is measured uh, in a positive counterclockwise direction all the way around. So instead of uh, my limitation that I had before, I'm now seeing angles measured uh, beyond 180 degrees. So in this case, I need an angle of 315 degrees. And because I'm using the pointer method, I can enter that directly, hit enter, and it puts the line in the, uh, in the proper spot. Now I'm going to hit enter to end this command and let's take a look at how dynamic inputs use with some of our other draw commands. I'm going to uh, start a circle here and I could, uh, it asked me, prompting me for the center point of my circle. And depending on what I get in this um, tooltip box is going to has to do with which ones of my drawing aids I have turned on. So if I have object snap turned on, it finds an object snap. It's going to tell me that uh, if it finds a uh, a tracking point, it's going. I'm going to see information about the tracking point. So what information you see in the tooltip box depends on what uh, drawing aids you have turned on and how the, what their settings are. But for right now, we're going to give this an absolute input. I'm going to say that I want this to be at 2.5, comma, and it switches to the Y, 2, which starts my circle right there, and it says specify the radius of the circle. Uh, or my down arrow key will show me my options. So the last circle I drew was 1, so it shows up as a default. Or if I use the down arrow key, I can change from radius input to diameter input. I'm going to hit enter and choose diameter input, and now my tooltip's asking me for the diameter of my circle. Uh, if I enter 1, you'll notice it comes up over here in my input box, and I hit enter on the keyboard, then it draws me a 1 inch diameter circle. The behavior of the dynamic input system is controlled by the options that you choose from the options panel. If I go down here on the status bar to dynamic input and right click the mouse and go to settings, you can look at the choices that you have in setting up your dynamic input and how it's going to work. So you can see that you can enable or disable things like pointer input method or dimensional input method, and you have options to control how that input is going to be uh, prompted from you or be displayed. These changes in here, for example, will change how um, dimensional input is going to work when we're using grips to stretch objects. Uh, also, your drafting tooltip appearances, you can control things like the colors, the size of the boxes, or the transparency as you move around the screen. 